Hi guys, I was terribly sorry about the last video on the focus and uh, it was out of focus and I didn't realize it. the automatic focus doesn't work correctly so this time we're going to do it over quite quickly uh, but we're going to do it from the very beginning okay so the first thing you want to do is press your sequencer button and then you will want to clear the sequence so to clear the sequence we can do two things we can either use load and initialize song or we can press the shift select the song utility and select clear song to clear the song the next thing we will want to do is to go to the microscope and create some events and we select control change and then we have to change the control change type to zero bank select I hope you can see that I have it quite clear and then we come down and we insert another control change and for this one we change it to 32 30 notice that the first one is 0 on the left this one is 32 and it also says bank select and then finally we can insert a program change there you have it guys so we need three numbers to select any tone of the over 2000 tones that are in your instruments or the ones that you have added in user memory with those three with the bank select 0 and 32 which is LSB and MSB and the program number you can select any tone in the instrument where are we gonna get the tone numbers from we get the tone numbers from the sound list book which is on the Roland site now I have two other videos on this topic linked in the description below one gives you the sound numbers and bank select numbers for the user memories and the other one shows how to use microscope to do program change alright so we're going to use several numbers which we have gotten out of this uh, text which is on the Roland site called the sound list text and to do that we are just going to go up and move the highlight to the end which is the data value and so we are going to rotate it to 89 And the next one we are going to rotate to 64. Yours will maybe be different. As I said, the book has in the numbers for all of them. And then finally we have 10. So every single tone on the instrument can be addressed as a set of three numbers. Now what I also showed you in the video was I showed you that you can select all of these and uh, copy them. We can use copy and paste in this both the microscope and the other editing features within the sequencer. So we hold down the shift button and we highlight all of them and we press the copy here copy event 
and then we move it to the end and we go paste. Now when we paste it asks us where we want to put it. Right? So we can put it in measure 4. And execute. And we will have the three of those posted down further down. Now those are two program changes that we've done and we've set up the first one but not the second one. So what do we need to do? We need to change the second one and this one we are going to remember to move the highlight to the end where we're trying to change it. This one is 95. and uh, 70 and uh, 85 and you might think that we're done at this point we've put in two tones in our sequencer but notice that where they are at is not ideal because we have a whole beat between the changes. Ideally we want as little space between these changes. We would like brum 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 those three uh, signals uh, LSB, MSB and uh, program change to be sent one after the other, brum brum brum, on three separate ticks of the clock. We don't want to send one, then wait a whole bar and send another, then wait a whole bar and send another one. Because if we do that, the tone is not going to change until the last one. And uh, that's not, we want it to change when at the time that we want it to change. So let us go now there and uh, we'll click on here where it says move and let us just move it one tick mark and let us move down to the next one and move it back to measure one and set it for two tick marks and let us go to the third one move it back to measure one and set it for three tick marks so that will mean now that they're sent in the exact order that they need to be sent in the MIDI to the engine to be able to change the tone. So we need to do the same thing for this one. We press move. One tick mark. Put it back to measure four. Two tick mark. Execute. Back to measure four. Three tick marks execute. Now we see that when we go to back to our sequencer Now let us move to the second topic for this afternoon. 
we are looking at the track modify. This track modify is where we have the capability to copy measures, erase or delete whole measures, insert, transpose and do other changes within the tracks. One thing that's not re really noticed, we will deal with some of these in later videos, is the utility of the copy. If we select the copy, notice we can select one track, two, three, four, even a tempo track. This is the source track, or all of them, all tracks. Then we can set where we want to copy it to in terms of the measures and where it's going to be copied to and then we can select the destination track well if the, if the source track is all then the destination track is going to be all but if we have a track selected then we can come down here and we can copy it to a different track and then we can decide whether we want to copy all events some events whether we want to mix or replace what is copied. Of, and how many times we want it to be copied as well. I don't think any of you all realize the versatility that is contained in the track modify menu. This is where we arrange our music, move our sequences about, and get our song ready to play. We can do our verses, choruses, bridges, and everything we want on as many tracks as we want. And we can do everything that we can do in our DAW from within here. So the two, the two best menus is either the track modify or the microscope, depending on whether we want to deal with individual events or whether we want to move whole measures around between tracks and so forth. Now, somebody asked me about looping. We can loop and set the loop Notice that is looped. We just press the loop to turn it off. But we can set the loop for all or part of it simply by holding down the shift. And then we have a loop window. Start point, end point for our looping. Finally, as if that's not enough, in order to save everything that we have done all of our work in the sequencer, the next step is to press the right button, select song, that's what our the total contents of our sequencer is re referred to as a song, then we will select that and then we will obviously want to either overwrite a destination or we will want to put it in a new destination. As you can see, I have lots of stuff in here. So in order to find a new destination, I have to go fairly far. You can hold up to a thousand, well actually 999 songs on one flash card. There. As long as you see in its song, nothing is in the location right now. So on this flashcard, I have about uh, 206 songs. And uh, then you would want to click rename. And here is a little tricky because when you're renaming, you're actually renaming what you want the sequence to be stored as. So you would have to go up and down to get the letters. And we would say, what was today's? 
Today's um, episode dealt with microscope. So you then press this over, and of course this is a little fiddly. But um, you get the hang of it after a while. MIC. And just you press OK. And then it says save microscope to this place, and you go OK. And there you're done. Saved. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.